greetings to you all. Let us meet again and uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, batteries and battery technology. As I had already explained to you in my last uh, ending remarks in my last class, battery technology has grown into uh, an enormous field with lot of improvements and applications starting from rural areas to space. So, uh, first of all a little bit about the history and history is same as electrochemical technology it is as old as electrochemical technology the history of batteries also. So, the first effect was by Galvani Italian scientist who found that the uh, frogs legs moved a little bit here and there when the uh, electrical metals were connected to the nerves of the frogs and uh, he showed that uh, uh, they, they, there will be electrical impulse that can affect the that can be the root cause of uh, movement of the frogs nerves. Further uh, based on his first uh, observation a uh, unit cell of battery is generally called as a galvanic cell. Around the year 1800 the Volta Alessandro Volta observed that a stack of alternating dissimilar metals with a layer of paper in between the metal gives rise to electricity. This is a very simple observation, but uh, it does not mean that uh, what ob Volta observed is uh, uh, no is not out of the ordinary, but at the same time it was a very important discovery at that time that you just connect the two metals with a paper in between the metal by layers giving rise to electricity was something phenomenal at that time. So, later Michael Faraday uh, of course, he is a known very well known scientist without him nothing much moves in scientific circles he is regarded as great as Newton and uh, he worked for number of years on the electricity and probably he was the first to discover the chemical reaction uh, in around 1830 that uh, the chemical reactions were the source of electricity produced by a battery. So, it is for this reason that his name is used to describe electrode operations as faradic processes, faradaic processes or faradic processes uh, both mean the same F A R A D I C or D A I C. So, for the rest of the 19th century batteries were almost always used for experiments in chemistry and physics laboratories only. They came into the market later and when they came into the market the batteries used to um, be nothing but voltaic piles that is one after metal after another connected with a separate uh, with a separator in between. So, they consisted of a series of zinc and copper plates fastened back to back to form high voltage low current sir, source. So, obviously low current was a problem and uh, subsequently in the early part of uh, 20th century dry cells were invented that is by Gassner in this cell the electrolyte was immobilized by adding a little bit of starch to the electrolyte. I think most of you must have seen dry cells in the shops and markets and what, what it contains? It contains a shell outside with a tip at the bottom and a tip at the at the top where the wires are to be connected is not it. So, inside what goes must be two electrodes and the electrolyte. Okay. So, the point is 
if it is liquid, it will spill, corrode and do lot of things to the metal plate outside what you see it as a cylinder. And uh, for that what he did was he added a little bit of starch to the electrolyte. What made the starch uh, um, conducive for dry cells is it is non reactive. It does not take part in the reaction, but it makes a gel. So, the gel will not spill out of the, the battery cell. So, that gelling agent was the invention of uh, Alexander Gassner and since it was easier to such a seal to seal such a cell it paved the way for the development of the portable power which we normally carry in all our uh, mobiles and this that and then uh, torch cells. Uh, many portable power uh, requirement and are met with uh, these uh, um, cells and uh, you are all aware of the present day batteries. We use them in different formats in our computers, mobiles, and then uh, radio equipments and then in uh, automation, automobiles, dry batteries, present day batteries, lead acid system is one of them, oldest one lead acid system, but uh, most extraordinarily sustainable lead acid system. You will be surprised to know that uh, even though lead is a an environmental uh, no, not desirable element in the environment, lead acid system has survived and continues to thrive because of its capability for automation uh, for automobiles. Uh, for almost all automobiles still carry lead acid system as battery source. You need the battery to run during nights to give you headlights, this, that, etcetera, electrical systems in the car, all of them run on lead acid battery systems. Very recently, only since last 20 years, things are changing a little bit for uh, nickel cadmium batteries and uh, simultaneously. Uh, nickel ion cells, lithium cells, lithium battery cells and uh, they are all invented and developed as storage cells during the same period. But uh, lead acid still retains its pride of place because uh, of the simplicity of the uh, manufacture and operation maintenance, simplicity of maintenance you do not have to do anything except uh, sometimes acid may leak, you throw away the lead acid battery, put another battery. Almost all parts of the lead acid batteries are recirculated nowadays including the separators. So, the advent of dry cells has uh, one can say safely that it has revolutionized the uh, uh, more our modern life. Many new battery systems have come into vogue in the later part of the 20th century and uh, several new batteries are now based on lithium used as anode material and important rechargeable batteries are there containing metal hydrides as negative electrode instead of metals. We use metal hydrides and uh, recent uh, special rechargeable battery is based on carbon intercalated with lithium. That is also very important as the negative electrode. This is one of the most recent one. Such systems seem to be very promising for the future development because they can make the batteries smaller, more efficient and easy to carry. And wastage is very less and uh, the charge density and current density are very high compared to their size and myriad applications are available for the use of such batteries. So, let us know a little bit more about the batteries and batteries are broadly classified into the following three categories. What are the categories? One is primary battery, secondary battery and reserve battery. 
primary battery is designed to be discharged only once and thrown, use and throw primary batteries, they cannot be reused. And secondary battery, it is rechargeable, it can be used like the primary battery, then recharged and used again and again until the recycle is repeated uh, continuously until the capacity fades or is lost suddenly due to internal short circuit. Nothing else can happen except the internal short circuit in most of these batteries. And uh, there are reserve batteries in which active materials are kept separated by a special arrangement. Only when you need the active material is released and battery comes into operation. Especially when you want to deploy battery, uh, battery uh, for space applications, you do not need to open the battery start working at the moment it leaves the earth surface. No, not necessary. Only when it is deployed there in the orbit, probably we want the batteries to open up. In such cases, what we do? We take the electrolyte, take the electrodes, seal it, but then we have a mechanism to remove the, uh, the separator will uh, be actuated by, the, uh, by an activation device and then it starts operation. So, such batteries are stored for long storage before use. An important relationship between Faraday's law and thermodynamics, very important Gibbs free energy. I have already described to you number of times this uh, equation that is delta G is equal to minus N into F E that is also equal to delta H minus T delta S where delta G is the Gibbs free energy, N is the number of electrons, F is Faraday's and E is the voltage. Delta H is the enthalpy, change in the enthalpy of course and T absolute temperature and delta S is change in the entropy of the system. So, delta S is given by N F into delta E by delta T at P and delta H is given by this expression N F E by E minus T delta E by D, D by D T at P and uh, that uh, real, uh, relation basically is used to compare different uh, um, batteries and we will not go into details of these uh, applications except to describe that most of the batteries can be uh, evaluated using the change in heat, change in entropy and change in the maximum production of the potential. So, here we are going to discuss a little about the primary cells. This primary cell is nothing but a simple voltaic cell, it consists of two metal plates, one is copper, another is zinc. They are separately dipped in sulfuric acid contained in a glass vessel. The chemical action of zinc with sulfuric acid, it produces zinc sulphate, is not it? Plus 2 hydrogen uh, um, ions and uh, that furnishes chemical energy which forces the electricity from zinc to copper inside the cell. So, the EMF of the cell is potential difference between zinc and copper plates. This also we have discussed when we were discussing about the fundamentals of uh, electrochemical cells. So, here you can see the layer of hydrogen that may accumulate on the positive element tends to increase the resistance for the passage of the current inside the cell and also it causes a back EMF sometimes. So, this is called polarization. So, the I have taught you earlier that polarization is nothing but the change in the potential uh, from the calculated value, but how does it happen is given here that is the layer of hydrogen that comes and it accumulates increases the resistance of the passage of the current and EMF increases. So, the type B, Daniel cell. 
very well known very standard uh, cell and this cell is represented something like this zinc and then zinc uh, cathode it is negative uh, indicates cathode and then zinc sulphate uh, in connection with uh, copper sulphate and copper. Anode reaction is zinc 2 Zn plus plus 2 E minus Cu 2 plus plus 2 E minus goes to Cu and zinc plus Cu SO 4 goes to Zn SO 4 plus copper the EMF is 1.1 volts for this cell. So, Grove Bunsen cell essentially the same thing zinc H2SO4, HNO3 and platinum electrode. So, here I have H2SO4 and nitric acid together and um, but uh, separated in uh, with a salt bridge. So, nitric acid acts as a depolarizer and the liquid junction potential that might be generated between the two acids is negligible. The reactions essentially remain the same zinc and H sulfuric acid to produce zinc sulphate and HNO3 and H2 will produce water and nitric oxide. So, in the um, third one is the bichromatic cell. So, we use zinc chromic acid and then H2SO4 and water and this is the carbon electrode and zinc electrode here. So, this is 18 parts, this is 22 parts and this is 100 parts. So, the reaction essentially same zinc to zinc 2 plus and 3 zinc ions will produce 6 electrons and these 6 electrons are required for potassium dichromate to produce chromium 3 and uh, cell total cell reaction is nothing but zinc plus H2SO4 is going to zinc sulphate. So, the chromic acid is prepared by reacting potassium dichromate with H2SO4. So, here instead of nitric acid we are using chromic acid as a depolarizer. Next one I want to describe to you is uh, the Clark standard cell that is represented as zinc amalgam, zinc mercury amalgam on the as cathode, zinc sulphate, mercuric sulphate and mercury as anode. Cell reaction is nothing but zinc and Hg2SO4 going to zinc sulphate and water mercury. Here the EMF is 1.433. How much was the zinc uh, original cell? Zinc copper 1.1 volts. Now, it is just by this arrangement if I go for a amalgam and H D 2 S O 4 as a, an anode I can increase the voltage to 1.4 volts. So, this western cadmium cell again we will discuss a little bit because this is also a very standard uh, um, battery the cell may be represented as cadmium as an amalgam and percentage is 12.5 percent and cadmium sulphate is the electrolyte Hg 2 SO 4 is the another electrolyte in contact with mercury anode. Reactions are represented simply here the Hg 2 SO 4 goes to Hg and cadmium, cadmium will go to cadmium sulphate that is the product. So, carbon zinc cells are very popular. There are two basic versions of carbon zinc cells. One is the Leclanche cell and another is the zinc chloride or heavy duty cell. The original Leclanche cell consisted of simple amalgamated zinc rod, you know just a simple rod as anode and a carbon plate surrounded by a mixture of granular carbon that means carbon rod put some uh, granules around it and uh, seal it. So, that uh, carbon uh, granular carbon was there and MnO2 manganese uh, dioxide. So, that will act as a cathode dipping into a solution of about 20 percent 
uh, ammonium sulphate as electrolyte. So, so, what is the reaction? Carbon is there, ammonia is there, MnO2 is there and ammonium sulphate is there, zinc is there. So, the cell reaction is zinc uh, will be reacting with ammonium chloride MnO2 and then there is reduction. The anode in this case is magnesium rod, a simple magnesium rod. So, in the dry cell which is a modern version of Leclanche cell, the electrolyte is immobilized by using electrolyte in the form of a paste. You can put uh, this uh, starch or any other material to form a paste. Here we have the cathode reaction 2 MnO2 plus water in presence of 2 electrons it will produce MnOOH manganese hydroxide and then anode reaction zinc will dissolve giving you zinc 2 ions. A primary reaction is 2 NH 4 Cl plus 2 OH minus going to ammonia plus 2 chloride and 2 H 2 O. Secondary reaction is zinc will react with this ammonia to produce zinc ammonium chloride that is a complex actually. So, zinc ammonium complex is the end result. So, overall cell reaction we can represent it like this zinc plus 2 MnO2 plus 2 H 2 O going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 O H minus plus 2 MnO O H minus. You must uh, remember this kind of expressions especially if I ask in the examination. So, I am giving you a hint that please do not ignore cell reactions in the battery chapter. Please study them well. So, you will be benefited by knowing the basic reactions and uh, the anode reaction coming back to our discussion magnesium 2 plus will react with magnesium will react with 2 OH minus ions to give magnesium hydroxide. So, the overall cell reaction is magnesium plus 2 MnO2 plus 2 H 2 O going to 2 MnO OH and plus and magnesium hydroxide that is the overall reaction. So, in paper lined cells that is Leclanche cells a separator coated with starch or modified starch is used that is much thinner and more conductive than starch separator alone. So, this type of separator is used in premium Leclanche cells and zinc chloride cells. In such cells the separator is normally inserted from the top into the zinc can followed by insertion of the carbon rod into the cathode mix. So, you can see the cutaway section that we have a carbon electrode here okay. and then I have a top washer here and then wax ring seal is here, one more seal asphalt seal and then anode is there here at the edge here near uh, this thing. It extends to the almost to the middle of this uh, reaction of this uh, length. And then uh, we have jacket labeled polyethylene blended bonded tube to give a finish nice finish here outside the cell. So, in the bottom we have a metal bottom cover and cup and star bottom on the other side. So, they can be closed like this ok. They can be closed like this for sealing and then you will see a seal in between. So, when it is sealed there is some air space here and zinc can is here, craft paper is here label and plastic film and paper separator. So, here again I have a support washer, cathode mix manganese etcetera this is the electrolyte. What is a cathode mix? Cathode mix contains manganese dioxide, carbon and electrolyte. So, this is a readily available across the shelf Leclanche cell.
and uh, we you must have seen a lot of cells like this flat cells. Here I have a positive contact, here I have a negative contact and then a connector strip is there throughout this length okay, that one. And then uh, lithographed uh, steel jacket is here this one and then uh, wax coating is here inside outside and uh, sectional view will normally show that uh, the uh, outer top plastic envelope you, you, you will automatically see cathode mix you will not see this, but this dark portion which I am showing here contains manganese dioxide and carbon electrolyte. And then there is a separator here again as usual and anode is there zinc and carbon conducive coating is at the other edge. So, but uh, such cells are also quite useful and they have a longer life. Then I want to describe to you Reuben Mang Mallory dry cells. Here zinc is used as the anode while the cathode consists of a paste of carbon and mercury, mercuric oxide actually. So, the electrolyte is a 40 percent KOH solution saturated with potassium zincate. See in all these uh, new cells the most of the materials are uh, highly researched and kept in such a way that the chemicals will not leak out that is one of the prime requirement and it must operate for longer time. And uh, new materials instead of starch what else I can use? I can use CMC carbon methox carb uh, carboxymethyl cellulose. It is a very simple white powder that can be mixed with water and made into a paste and then connected. So, that is how the such cells are constructed and paste and uh, electrolytes they are all kept in the confinement. So, that things can be sealed from the bottom and top etcetera using washers and sealers. So, anode reaction uh, basic chemistry remains the same. So, anode reaction zinc and 2 OH minus goes to zinc hydroxide uh, it forms zinc ion and then HgO plus H2O goes to mercury and overall cell reaction zinc plus HgO plus H2O goes to zinc hydroxide and mercury. Then we have couple of things like alkaline cells. Alkaline cells you must have heard you know whenever you go to any mall or uh, metro you will see whenever you want to buy cells for your mouse or computer or something uh, batteries, torches etcetera you look for alkaline cells because they can be reused, recharged and reused. So, early alkaline cells were of the wet cell type early ones. However, alkaline cells of 1990s are almost uh, limited electrolyte that is dry cell type. In primary alkaline cells sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide is used, but uh, zinc is used as the anode material while a variety of materials can be used as cathode. So, uh, this is the construction of a cross sectional view of a typical cylindrical alkaline cell. Here you can see that I have a brass rivet here, and then I have a connect connector here steel plated positive cover and then cathode is here at this edge round it is cylindrical basically. Okay. So, cathode is made of manganese dioxide carbon and electrolyte that means it is like a uh, it is like a paste. And, uh, here I in the center I have a another plate brass plate brass plate is screwed here and this brass plate you see this cylindrical this is cutaway section. So, brass plate acts as a collector you can see the yellow line here in between and that is a, a cylindrical operation here. And separator I have that is a non woven fabric 
and then an electrolyte, a metal washer. Uh, you know what is, I hope you know what is washer. Washer is a metal seal, it is a thin metal plate. So, metal spur is there to connect and disconnect, brass rivet is there, and then steel plated negative cover, inner cell cover, seal, anode gel, powdered zinc that is anode gel above this and then steel can, this is the steel can long one and metallized PVC label that is outside. So, polyvinyl chloride coated with metal that is electroplated, we have discussed about such things in the last class. So, the alkaline cell derives its power from the reduction of the MnO2 cathode and the oxidation of zinc anode. What is the anodic reaction? Very simple zinc is there, OH is there, alkali is there. So, it has to form zinc oxide and water. In the cathode reaction manganese is there, manganese can get reduced to MnOOH. It is a very standard reaction, this reaction MnOOH. Usually we write with bracket MnOOH, O outside and OH in the bracket. Uh, but the overall cell reaction remains the same and miniature alkaline cells we can make very small cells, button cells and uh, there we use uh, zinc anodes and alkaline cells electrolyte we using NaOH and KOH small quantity a few 1 or 2 ml or maybe 0.5 ml and a variety of cathodic materials can including MnO2, mercury on uh, a mercuric oxide and metal and even air, zinc air batteries. So, all these things can be used as uh, uh, cathode materials. So, miniature alkaline cells is what you see in your watches and other things. That cutout figure is here. This is an anode cap, this is cell can, this is a gasket here and a separator here this is the separator that brown piece and then a cathode that is the base plate and anode is this plate. So, very simple construction, but very small if may be a few milliliters you would have seen in your watches such cells. So, the zinc manganese oxide miniature alkaline cells are used where economic power source is required very small quantity is required to run your watches. So, the, but the chemistry remains identical with that of the zinc and manganese oxide cylindrical battery. So, they have higher capacity than zinc manganese oxide uh, batteries. So, the cathode reaction is again essentially same dissolution of mercury uh, oxide to mercury that is reduction removal of oxygen is reduction. So, miniature zinc silver oxide batteries, they have high energy density almost as high as mercury cells. See when we say high energy density, we should know what are the mercury cell density it is. So, I request you to go and find out what is the energy density for uh, zinc silver oxide and uh, mercury cells. They operate at higher voltages than mercury cells, but for somewhat lesser time. Higher the current we draw, less is the time the battery will be in operation. It would not be efficient for long time, but large current you can draw. So, the basic reaction is Ag2O plus H2O going to silver. Miniature silver oxide batteries are normally made with KOH or NaOH as the electrolyte. And however, what happens is batteries operate more efficiently at high current drains, whereas NaOH containing batteries are more resistant to leakages and easier to seal. So, KOH are not so easy to seal, but uh, sodium potassium no. So, they are one below the other in the periodic table. So, the capacity to gel 
is better for sodium than magnesium. So, the leakage will be less in the case of uh, sodium hydroxide than potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide can seep through easily. So, if I replace Ag2O with silver oxide, silver can have different uh, compounds. The mini in the miniature higher capacity and higher energy density can be obtained and the cathode reaction in this case is AgO plus H2O going to 2 Ag going to Ag plus 2 OH minus. Essentially reactions are always cathode reactions must always end in end in metal on the right side. If you remember that you can write many chemical reactions if you know what is the cathode. So, cross sectional here is a cross sectional view of the miniature air cell battery that is again you can see that it is almost similar gasket teflon separator uh, air access hole nickel screen air electrode anode and here is the can and here is the anode cap. This whole cap will act as a connector from the top and uh, the cathode will be at the bottom. So, miniature air cell cathode usually contains special type of carbon to provide a surface for the initial reduction of oxygen and also able to catalyze peroxyl decomposition. So, what is this uh, peroxyl decomposition we will study in the next class on the batteries. In the next class I will try to uh, conclude about the batteries because I do not want to teach you more about batteries, but the battery cell waste are quite a few because millions and millions of small battery cells are there in the environment containing lithium and other things. We have to know about it, how to handle those things. Thank you very much. We will continue our discussion in the next class. Have a nice day.